Good morning, YouTube. This is me on Ray George Page, aka the Emperor of Female Body Bit Talk, coming to you live, live on YouTube. Well, this is another one of my car uh, comparisons, and I picked two ladies who are legends, who are may you know, who you know, m many of you might know them, some like I said, they may not know them, but they are well known to sports. Now, one lady right here who, um, if you are like me, who are classic throwback fans from the good part of the 90s. This is one Miss Laura Carolyn. Now Miss Carolyn started a career around about the good part of the 90s and then she took some time off and she came back around about the early 2000s. She did pretty good you know in the 2000s. Her um, last competition before she retired again was 2016 when she when she took and won the uh, 2016 Toronto Pro. So that's pretty good to win the, a show like that in your backyard. A lady right here is one Miss Maria McCullough. I mean, Miss McCola is kind of like one of these uh, competitors that, you know, just, you know, she's, you know, like a, uh, I still again, she's the, uh, she's been, been around for quite some time. You know, the, uh, the top, you might say, you know, had boots on the ground, 10 toes down. I mean, she's been in a lot of competitions. She's been, you know, sometimes she's been in the top 10, top five, top three. I mean, she has a pretty good record. Now, uh, both are lovely ladies from the, the country of Canada, um, you know, legends in, you know, in the sport. Um, just great all around. Um, you kind of, how, how we can say it. They're like, you know, you, I won't say mainstays, but the type of ladies that you see just, you know, you might see like in the back, in the, in the uh, in backstage, you know, they're really nice ladies from when I, information I gather, approachable, polite. Um, very general, like general, like most Canadians. I think it's just, you know, uh, as Americans, the generalization of Canadians is all y'all just polite. You just some polite people, and these are very lovely ladies, and just they have uh, pretty good records, and um, they had you know, uh, pretty you know, you know, they did pretty good for for the time in the sport, and um, these type of ladies that you just you know get, like I said again, get kept swept under. By some of the stars during their during their times, you know, Miss um, Carolyn, she was competing in a good part of the uh, '90s with the likes of uh, Denise Rosowski, Kim Savesky, Linda Murray, um, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, those ladies, and then you know uh, Maria, she's up there with Margie V. Martin, Alina uh, 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 Popa, um, you know, um, you know, Hella Trevino, but you know, they just the type of ladies that you may not you might overlook. But you know what? You can never really forget. Now we are here. We have a nice starting pose, and you can see somewhat differences in their um, um, physiques. As you know, um, Laura, as you, as you know, she started around about the good part of the '90s. When she in her career, she was like in her um, early 30s, and she popped back up. And you know, I'm not gonna say a lady's age, but you know, she even though she has you know gone on a little bit years, she's still impressive. You know, and this is around about 2016 at the Toronto Pro. And right here we have Maria. And this was at the um, Chicago Pro, that was 2018. And, you know, you can see the difference how she's more leaner. She has more of the taper look that I think the judges like. And I think this is why at this show she took second. You know, it, you know this is a show where I had a kind of an issue with uh, who took first place, you know. I mentioned before, I you know, you know, I'm not gonna talk to you about details, but you know, you know, you have to, you, 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 you can you can you can you can you can check in my ad libs. <laughs> now here we have a front lat spread, and you can see how much you know um, Laura's shoulders are a little bit wider. You know, I think her years of being competitive, she has learned a lot as a competitive bodybuilder. Um, Maria has a great physique. But overall, if you really look at them, you know, Laura just, she's bringing pure muscle. Now, some might think Maria's closer to a physique competitor. She's not. She's competed for bodybuilding for quite some time. But Laura, she is more of what you see in a bodybuilder. And she does have that classic throwback look, you know. But here, if we go by, you know, I have to go with Laura right here on this one here. And here we have a front double. And again, Laura is just, um, this is the reason why she won the Toronto Pro. She's just more vascular. Now, like I said, Maria, no slouch. She has great development, but her bicep peak is more 
higher compared to Maria. Maria is is good and tight, but Laura, you just see how much, you know, just how purely vast. But she just you go, my God, yeah, this is why she won that show. You know, this is this is just, she just in great condition. You know, here we have a side chest, and this is what I like about both these women. Even though they got breast implants, they didn't they didn't go overboard like a lot of competitors do. You know, they, you know, they, they, they stay moderate. I think this is, this is my personal ability. If you're going to get breast implants, don't go over D. A small, maybe a large C is good. You know, you know, it's, it still makes you more feminine, but you don't have to look like a, you know, blow up doll. You know, and you know, if you look at the chest development, uh, I think I have to give it to Maria on this one. I think Maria is a little bit more defined, a little more, you know, you can really see how it's more cut and definition in her chest compared to uh, Laura. So which one, this one here, I give this one to Maria. Now here we have is the rear lat spread. And Laura takes this one here. I mean, Laura, you know, she should move her head a little bit. When you do a pose like this, if you're a woman, if you're a woman with long hair, even if it's not too long, it's still best to move a little bit so you can see it around the shoulders and around your traps. So right here, I think I'll give the push to Laura. And you see how much wider it is compared to um, Maria. And Maria looks a little bit, I don't know, her, her, her left side looks like it drops a little bit. And I think that's what hurt her. I think that's probably what, what hurt in this competition. That's why she took second place. If she came in in better condition, a little bit more um, cut, defined, I think she could have took first place from that person who didn't deserve it, in my opinion. Yeah. Here we have the rear bicep. And once again, right here, I have to give this one to Laura. Laura is just totally impressive. It's just, you know, her development is just on point. Like I said, Maria has good development. But Laura, I think she's just pure, a shred monster here this one. That's why she won the show um, that, uh, that year. Here we have a tricep. And, hmm. I see, hmm. I think I might push it on Laura on this one. I think I do. I think I'm going to actually push it on Laura. You can really see how she really is pulling that, that arm down and really getting that, you know, you know, pulling that arm where she can really see the cut, how the, uh, you know, the upper shoulder and the tricep is cutting in. You know, you see that cut, how, you know, if you pay attention, like I said, I'm not a judge, not an expert. I'm just a fan. And the details I pay attention to, but you see how the, you know, right there at the lower upper shoulder part, how it cuts in. And that's a real sign of how well defined her muscle is. You know, you know, I think this was, you know, if Laura should have, what, what, what Marie should have did, she should have pulled her arm a little closer to her instead of a little farther away. So I think this is a better pose for um, Laura. And here we have the abs. And I'm going to say this one again. Laura takes this one. Laura, you can see her. You know, her upper abs is more defined. Um, you know, Maria, she's, like I said, she's a little smaller in the waist. She has a taper look to her. But you don't see her abs as well compared to Laura. Um, the question is, I, I, this, is I'm going, this is a question I'm wondering. Did Maria ever have children? That's often, I often question like this. This is the thing often sometimes with women. Where you overweight, you have children. Does, does that affect your cell wall? If you had kids, um, especially, you know, you know, at your, you know, early in her, before she started a bodybuilding career, that's probably what it would really affect her abdominals. Now we have a bicep shot, and this was kind of almost. I think I'll have to give this one slight edge to Maria. You know, um, Laura's pretty good, but I think Maria takes this one right here. You know, I I give this one to you know, to Maria. Maria, I think she can take this one right here. Now we have the glutes. And most definitely, look at the lines in Laura's glutes. I mean, look at her, 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 her butt is like, you know, I mean, it is her, she's some totally shredded. I mean, she, it's like shredded cheese. I mean, you can bounce a quarter off her glutes. I mean, wow. I mean, she's just killing it with the glutes, you know. Both these ladies are very physical impressive ladies. Uh, I think uh, they're women of different eras, but they competed about the same time. Um, I know uh, Laura returned around about 2012 after taking like almost a, a five, six year hiatus. 
you know, from the sport. Um, Rhea's been competing since the early, um, late 90s, early 2000s. She got a pro card, I think, about, about 2013, 2014. Um, you know, she's been doing pretty good. She's, what she kind of, she's the kind of person been grinding out a good bit, you know, um, you might say she's kind of the type that's like never bride, never always a bride maid, but never a bride. Um, during her career, the law is about the same. She competed with, like I said, she competed like like alongside um, you know Denise Rosowski, um, you know Nancy Lewis. I mean, I remember I was watching a video with her. Um, she was competing at Jantana back in '93 with you know with uh, Krista Bach and and um, you know Denise and Nancy Lewis and so many others. I mean, some of my favorites, you know. And these are just amazingly, you know, physically fit women, you know, especially for their for their uh, age and you know just and you got like I say, Laura, like I said, being for her age, most definitely Laura. As you said again, she started in the sport in her early twenties, around about the nineties. Retired in her early thirties, came back. I think around you know, I'm not gonna say too much about you. Know, you do the numbers, and then did pretty good for herself, and then she you know she bowed out. And this is a great example. There's a lot of women who I often say who hit their strides right about, I would say, late 30s, early 40s. And, you know, they just, I don't know. It's, it's like, you know, with, with men, we hit our best years through our teens and up to our 20s. And once we hit our 30s, everything goes down. Women, they're different. I think they hit their strides about late 30s early 40s do pretty good and then they start they start going down i think about 60s you know in their 60s you know and i think this is amazing you know and like i said both these women they have um left the sport i remember i was talking to uh, i was like um i was messaging with uh tana hugh one day i was like doing a uh, so i was gonna do i was mentioning i was gonna do something about um with uh with maria i was wondering she said was maria gonna come back I said nah she said maria retired and i said i respect that you know she retired you know she she did what she did in women's sport you know, and like I said, often I said this, most of the ladies do the sport for the love of it. There's no real profit for it. They, they know that they don't get much money compared to the men. And they try to make their money off the side of what they, they can do with their looks, their physiques. You know, they can't always, you know, like I said, you can't always rely on the prize money. You know, they, they make their book other ways. And some of them do it maybe on the back end. Some do it respectfully. They do it what they can, what they can do and how they can do it. And this is all, I'm, not st I'm still saying like this. I still believe that these women should get a little bit more for what they do. They, they work just as hard as the men. And, and it's, it costs more for a female bodybuilder to compete because they have to have makeup now. They have to have their posing suits. You know, it they, they costs more than in, uh, most people's rent for a posing suit. And, you know, these ladies, and if, if the money was more... Uh, fluid and more um, just better for some of these women, I think some of these ladies would stay a little longer. I think someone like Marie McCullough would stay a little longer if the money was more worth her while. I'm going to say, she, she did this for the love of it, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to make a little money for yourself if you're doing something for the love of it. You should get paid for the love of something you do. You know? And, um, you know, Laura, she did her time. She already, she had a second win, and I think she's done. But she's still in great shape for a lady her age. I mean, right here on this um, Harley. I know she's having a good time. She's enjoying retirement. You never know. She, maybe, like I say, it's, it's been like 2016 she's retired. That's been five years. Maybe she want to pop back in. This is why I said that. This, I said this should, I'm still saying this, it should create a women's master's division for some of these ladies who want to come back and just want to compete for the hell of it, for the joy of it. You know, that'd be a great division for them. You know, they can still compete alongside with the, uh, the ladies that's still in the game, that's up and comers, and the, and you know, but um, these are modest ladies, great competitors. Um, they get these are the kind of ladies that you don't, you overlook a lot quite often, but they still knock it out the box when they when they can. So anyway, this is your man all the way, George Page, A.K.A. the Emperor of Female Bodybuilding Talk. Like, don't like, subscribe, don't subscribe. I'm out.